There we go. Good evening, everybody. Um, again, the internet is buffering, so I'm doing a recording, and it is maybe four minutes till eight right now, uh, two minutes till eight, and it was just going back and forth, back and forth. So hopefully, I might be able to give you a brief uh, uh, reflection, and then so you can listen to it here. Uh, within uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and get still get to bed at 9 o'clock. <laughs> That's my hope for you, right? All right, so let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From that she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is day 31 in our 33 days to, to greater glory with the Father. And the three words that Father Gately presents to us again uh, is love, truth, and Father. Love. We cannot have enough time in a day to describe love. But if I were to put it simply, and you've heard me say this before, that love is the sacrificial gift of oneself for the sake of the other. Yes, yes. All through our life, we, taught, we were taught that the opposite of love is hate. But no, love is the sacrificial gift of self. The opposite of that love is selfishness. When we want to do what we want to do, we want to be served rather than to serve. And so if we were to look at the summary of that, of that tremendous love, it is submitting ourselves to the will of the Heavenly Father. And this is why Jesus Christ is glorifying the Father on the cross. This is why this is the greatest glory. What is glory? Glory is our ability to reflect back to God himself. So why is the Jesus Christ on the cross such a glorious reflection of the Heavenly Father? Is because it is the ultimate sacrifice of self. The sacrifice is Son. This is why the glory of the saints are so profound is because they enter into, they unite themselves into that ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ's love for his heavenly father in their participation and their martyrdom. This is the glory of the cross, the glory of the sacrificial gift of oneself. This is love and that love directs us to a truth and that truth is that there is an intimate union with our Heavenly Father through love that this God loved us so much he loved he wanted to share this love so profoundly that 15 billion years ago he created the material world and everything that we see and exist that we that exists and everything that we don't know. We only know a fraction of God's tremendous uh, uh, tremendous creation. We only know a small fraction of it here on the third rock of the from the sun. But this all powerful, almighty God is a God of love, and that He had desires to be intimately united to His creation. You've heard me say it before. Not only giving, not only intimately, intimately united with the God, as a, as a God of the universe and the cosmos, with all the laws of his love, all the laws of gravity that holds everything in place, all of that, that mighty hand holding that universe in place. But a God so intimately in love with every single atom 
and every electron, proton, and neutron in perfect balance, holding his material world together at the atomic level, microscopic level. This is our God. And science has even learned a subatomic level. This is this God who is so intimately united with his creation. And this is the truth that Jesus reveals. He reveals Father. Because of our limited language, because of our limited ability to express ourselves and, and to understand, this Father is intimate communion. He is the life giver and intimately united with his creation. And once again, not just us human beings, of course, his beloved creation, but intimately united with every single subatomic and atomic speck of creation that his love holds that atom together and every molecule in perfect balance. This is the truth that Jesus reveals, a truth that God is with us. God is with us as Father one who provides, one who is so almighty that even the wind and the seas obey him. This is the love and this is the intimate Father uniting with us. And so very briefly tonight, we look at this tremendous gift that's been revealed to us through the person of Jesus Christ. that this God is not at a distance. He is not a God who can be controlled. He is a God that gives himself completely and totally to us by giving us his son who gives himself completely and totally to the Father and to us. And in this intimate union, this intimate communion so profound we call it holy and that leads us to tomorrow tomorrow is that holy communion and what I'm going to do tomorrow as we go deeper and deeper into these final days of preparation as I'm going to take tomorrow and put them all together and what I'm going to do probably is do the recordings probably in the morning, probably in the morning, and then schedule them um, to be released. Uh, probably one in the afternoon and the other one to be released at uh, eight o'clock, maybe Saturday night. So I'm going to do both of these. Um, excuse me, um, we're going to do both of these uh, days tomorrow. And you might say, <laughs> I probably miscounted. I started on May 20th. I probably should have started on May 19th, <laughs> right? Because the consecration is to take place on the, on the next day after the 33rd day. And he, Father Gately, prefers that to be on a Sunday. So we can do this whenever you wish, but then um, I'll try to be back here maybe, I'm not sure if it's Sunday night or not, because um, it's weekend and I don't think they can get the internet fixed. But um, I'll try to put things together for us all. So yes, we're still gonna have class. <laughs> it's just gonna be recorded. Um, again, it's the weekend 
and the internet people weren't able to get here the Thursday, Friday, Thursday or today. So, what are the words today? Love, truth, and Father. Once again, the profound love is the sacrifice of oneself. The truth is the great revelation of the God all powerful. The Father unites himself to all creation in a particular way to humanity through his incarnate word. To reveal what? To reveal that he is our Father. And with this love, with this truth, and with this intimate union called Father, we're called to go out and share that reality with those we encounter. I'll close with this, today's meditation. Love, do I hear the Father say, you are my beloved? Let's hear it now. Rest in that love for a moment. You are my beloved. Truth. In my daily life, do I look up to heaven as Jesus did and say from my heart, Abba, Father, I trust in you. Can I start living that truth by offering that prayer today? That God, I trust in you. That no matter what comes my way, I know you're my Father. Number three, Father, do I live the truth that God is my Father such that his love is enough for me right here and right now? That it can heal all wounds? Or do I believe the Father of lies who tells me I must get out there and earn love with all these other traps that the world offers. And so tonight, today, let us reflect on this. The truth is that God is our Father and He already loves us with the love that we could possibly desire. With all the love that we could possibly desire. With that, I must mention that we have two regular attendees during our classes and our reflections and that is Pete and Alice. Pete and Alice, as I mentioned last day, their daughter was in ICU. She passed away this morning. So we're, we do not know when the arrangements for the funeral might, may be, but she's going to be flown back to Wichita and we will give her burial. So I ask us all, please tonight, let's pray the memorari for Pete and Alice, and that they may be consoled in the loss of their young daughter, 20-somethings, 30, maybe early 30s or late 20s, and that she might know the embrace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. For Pete and Alice and the repose of the soul of their daughter, Bethany. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come before thee I stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. And again, for uh, especially for Pete, remember, O most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin, my spiritual father, and beg your protection, O foster father of the Redeemer. Despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, goodness, hear and answer me. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, y'all.